Can you actually tell the difference between digital that has been edited to simulate film and actual 35mm film? Let's see if Dehancer Pro can fool you and if ultimately it is the best film simulation available today. Did Dehancer Pro for Photo fool you? Let me know down in the comments how many you got right and which ones really stumped you. Before I jump into the little bit of the tutorial that I'm gonna do for Dehancer Pro using Affinity Photo plugin, I wanted to really zoom in and take a look here. This is inside of DaVinci Resolve right here. It is my video editing software of choice and I do have Dehancer Pro on this program as well, which I'll cover in another video. Also, if you guys are considering purchasing Dehancer Pro, they did approach me to create this video. However, what they did not know is that I was already <laughs> just about to buy the photocopy of the software, and I already had the DaVinci Resolve version as well. And something else they didn't know is I shot film extensively and that was my primary way to break myself into photography so I actually have film scans on my computer that we compared here in this video so this is actual film this was I still have this camera this was taken with a super zoom point and shoot a Pentax camera it was shooting Fujifilm extra 400 it is a 35 millimeter format let's take a quick look there's not a lot of halation it's pretty soft. Uh, the grain is even soft, which means the scan was either uh, not quite perfectly in focus or it was a small size scan or the scanner needed cleaning. Uh, but it still looks pretty good. And honestly, guys, if you were to print this out, it would still look, still look really good. Let's look at the clouds up here. Let's take a look at the dynamic range over here on the color tab. You can see it's really stretched all the way out. We pushed past uh, our dynamic range just a little bit in the shadows. You can see they're clipped out down here. But now let's look at, at the Dehancer version. As you guys can see, I was able to replicate the blurred out grain that would simulate a realistic, like let's drop this off at a one hour photo roll of film that probably most of you guys are thinking with the nostalgic look. Um, it's a little bit soft intentionally. Um, it's dynamic range is going to be pretty similar we saved some of the clouds but we lost some this one's a little bit hotter a little brighter of an image than the film version but if you look at it back to back like it's got a little bit of the bloom like look on my face here on the film version you can see this is the actual highlight and my face is kind of bloomed out and i did the same thing here in this photo bloomed out the face a little bit i'll show you all how to do all of this and i'll do a photo or two on how I replicated the blurry grain to simulate a one hour photo or a Walgreens or a Walmart drop off your photos and get scanned type of look that everyone's really looking for. Everyone wants to jump in the time machine and go back to the 80s and 90s because really guys, uh, it was a good time to be alive, right? <laughs> so here's the comparison. You get a little bit of tonal shift, but this is not a replica of Fuji Extra 400. This was just a film simulation. The Dehancer version honestly looks a lot more like gold, Kodak Gold or Kodak Color Plus. This is a Corvette C2 Grand Sport replica, big old 427, 
four-speed manual transmission. Absolute monster of a car. I got to ride around in this thing. And this here is a, uh, a rebuilt body off restoration Bel Air that was at a car show. So the 35 millimeter film is the Bel Air and the Dehancer is the Corvette Grand Sport. These are both double X. As you can see when we zoom in here, the way you can really sell some of this black and white film is it is very limited on dynamic range. So we go to the colors tab. You can see on this left side where our floor pan is represented, we lose some of the blacks. And up here at, up top, which is gonna be, this will be our carburetor uh, intake and a little bit of the dash and the, and the uh, shifter knob are blown out. So you're gonna lose a little bit of dynamic range versus color, and you're gonna have a little bit more bloom in my personal experience than color. So you get some bloom, you get a little bit of grain. The grain structure here looks nice. It looks a little bit clumpy. That's double X for you. And then come over to the real one. Oh my gosh, I mean, you see the bloom I'm talking about here on the, the column shifter versus if we come back over here, we got the bloom on the metallic steering wheel. In this portion, I'm gonna do a quick tutorial on the actual plugin inside of Affinity Photo. You can get this for Adobe products as well, DaVinci, and they have a phone app. I'm not a big phone photographer type of guy, but I will be showing you an upcoming video taking pictures with my Fuji film, transferring that over to my iPhone for easy sharing. And while it's on the iPhone, we're gonna do some film conversions. I'll also leave a link below to an extensive tutorial that someone else has done on the phone app if you guys are more interested in that. But for right now, let's take a quick look. We're gonna do two photos, one in color, one in black and white. I'm gonna go to filters, plugins, dehancer, dehancer, film. It's gonna bring us up a dialogue. And I'm gonna go ahead, and I want this one to be my black and white. So I'm gonna come down here to my film simulation of choice. I love double X, so we're gonna do double X again. So we have a ton of options here, right? So we have our source and you can click all these on and off. Whenever you select a film simulation on the left hand column here, it will automatically give you a predetermined set of settings on the right hand side of your screen, which you can go in and alter. And you can create a new preset in addition to what they already have baked in here. So great tool. Dehancer, instead of using film as an overlay, they claim, which I believe because it looks so good, that they actually basically imprint this grain into the image. You also get the ability to change the size, which is obviously, I mean, the size, big, thick, gritty, clumpy, or do you want to have it super, super, super fine? And then you also have the amount, which and now we're looking at, you know, some 1600 film that you push to 6400 or something like that. Your resolution is basically, really it's like blurring your image and taking that digital shadows, midtones, highlights. That's how much film grain is in your shadows, your midtones, and your highlights. And most of the time you're going to have more midtone grain than you will highlight and shadow grain. It's just the way that the film would react to light. And you could change this from negative to positive. So if you wanted to do a negative film, which is like your, your portraits, your color plus, your C200s, your gold, your extra 400, all that kind of stuff to a positive, which would be your Velvia, Provia type of grain, which does look different. Then you can change it right here and you have analog or digital. Digital shows would be experimental. I don't know why you would use digital. I would just use analog. Halation. Halation is what happens whenever the light is intense enough to go all the way through the film emulsion and bounce back off of the supposed to be non-reflective backing. And that will, you will usually see that in still film and that's really because they have taken the anti-halation layer off of it, which means you get a ton of that red glow around strong light sources. And it can range depending on the film and the situation, anywhere from a red to like a burnt orange. And this actually gives you the option to do that. 
So we can look at this by clicking the mask mode and then you can see our halation here. Now this is a black and white. Let me go to this arrow color. So here is, let me go, let me go crazy with it, All right? Amplify, let's go crazy. Okay, so you can see the hue as red, which is like your Cinestill or really most traditional bloom. Uh, if you go back and you watch the original Home Alone on the night scenes and you get up close and you look at around the street lamps, you're gonna see this pinkish glow, that's halation. But in other films, it'll come off more orangey. Usually this 50% point is realistically where it's gonna be. But if you want sort of this golden hour, uh, Portra 400-ish type of halation, you can press it even more to the, to the yellowish, goldish look. And then you can take your mask option off and that will show you a huge amount of halation. And now we have Bloom. For some reason on the double X 52 22. So let's check bloom. I think all double X should show a little bit of bloom whenever you have these hard highlights. Now this being a, a photo from inside of a car show, maybe not, maybe the lights aren't hard enough, but just to show you guys, I would show, put the mask on. We really don't want too much. Let's go 50 source limiter, dial it back so we can get a little bit more. Diffusion, I don't want it very amplified, but I want it a little bit. Save highlights, leave the saturation alone. Impact, let's do 80 and turn that off. There we go. That's a little bit more of the glow that we want. And the vignette, a lot of vignette that you see in classic photos is not from a like professional camera. That's gonna be from like your point and shoots or your super zooms, just limitations of the actual point and shoot camera or the, the cheaper, lens on these all-in-one cameras so that can kind of give you the the nostalgic feel that you're going for but if you're trying to replicate a professional photo most if not all professional level lenses weren't going to display vignette but it does kind of give you that vintage look because it again represents your family photos on your point and shoot so that option is there you press ok and it will put that on there now if you wanted to, see how this is some nice, sharp, crispy grain. If we come up to, let's resize it. First of all, resize document. I'm gonna take it down just a little bit to 192. It's gonna shrink my image a little bit, take some of the um, super sized megapixel edge off of it. And then I'm gonna come to effects and do a 0.1 or a 0.2 Gaussian blur. I'm gonna do a 0.1 because it should be a nice sharp film. We just wanted to take the edge off and there is my double X. Now let's just see what this does when I just drop a full color negative simulation on it. Filters, plugins, dehancer, film. I'm gonna bring up our dialog box. Let's see. I don't want Velvia. Portra 400 plus Endura, except the Endura is gonna be your paper. Kodak Endura paper, let's do linear, hit okay. There's our Kodak Portra simulation. And again, you can take that Portra base and go and mess with it and play with it and do whatever you want. And if you really like the look and you wanna apply that across an entire set or just save it for later, let me show you filters, plugins, dehancer, dehancer film. Let it come up. So let's say I did Agfa color, but I want a bunch of bloom. No, bloom, please. Bloom, please. Thank you. <laughs> a bunch of bloom, and we're going to really go crazy with it here. And I want that look. Well, now I can save it as a new preset within current settings and save it and name it however I want. And I can now apply that across a whole set, save it for later, whatever I wanna do. Again, guys, a 10% off code is on the screen now, and it's also down in the description down below. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I'm gonna do one on the iPhone app as well as DaVinci Resolve because that is what really brought me in. I've used it on professional paid work that has been on television, and I love it. The clients love it, and they don't even know I'm using it. 
absolutely fantastic product. Thank you guys so much. Y'all have a great day.